Ladies and gentlemen, the American Broadcasting Company brings to its entire network one of radio's most unusual programs. Pat Novak for Hire. the sign out in front of my office says Pat Novak for hire. You gotta put it in block letters because down on the waterfront in San Francisco there's a price tag on everything. You gotta do that or marry a rich widow. I don't like to work that hard so I rent boats and do anything else that's cash and carry. Oh, it's all right. You don't mind trouble because that's one thing you can't duck. It's like trying to dance the minuet and skis. And the best trouble always looks good from the outside. You're all smiles, and you feel like a kid opening a hand grenade under the Christmas tree. I found that out Tuesday night. It was around 7 o'clock, and I was getting ready to close the office when this little guy showed up. He was about the size of a golf bag with arms. If he had a cigar box, he could see over a pool table. He walked up to the desk and started talking in a voice that made you think he was trying to put Lily Pons out of work. Hello. You Novak? You're doing all right so far. What's on your mind? I'm Jackie Gregg. You heard of me, huh? You're the shy type, I know. I'm Jackie Gregg the jockey. You heard of me, huh? All right, now I heard of you. Put the show on the road. I'm looking for a horse. You want to find me a horse? Yeah, I breed him in the back room. What color you want? You're so tough I got to take that from you? Calm down before you wind up in a boy's choir. If you got anything to sell, put it on the line or beat it. I'm riding a horse tomorrow called Fleet Lady. She's disappeared. Well, she's not here. I'm supposed to ride the sixth race with her tomorrow. The Bonanza handicap, and she's gone. All right, she's gone. Maybe your horse likes to go out at night. I haven't seen her. Get to the point. I'll give you 200 bucks to find that horse. Somebody took her in a van. I trailed him down here at the waterfront. But you lost him up at the ferry building. That's right. Something funny's going on. My mount disappeared, and you got to find her. This is a big waterfront, and where's the 200 bucks? You'll get that, all right. Down by Pier 19, they turned in. You think you can find Fleet Lady? I don't know. Who owns her? woman named Sybil Thornton. She's, um, mixed up, I think. Yeah. Why steal your own horse? I don't know. Run a ring him, maybe. That's a tough trick. This woman's got some good ones. You want the 200 bucks? Yeah. How are the odds? What's the difference? You gonna open a book? You better take the 200 bucks now. Yeah. The dough will keep. You sound frightened, Junior. And you sound nosy. Here's the 200. I want you to find the horse. You let me know at the Kingston Hotel, huh? Sure. If you don't find anything around the waterfront, maybe you better try the track. Ask around there. Yeah, by the way, how do you fit in? How come you got $200 interest in that horse? Maybe I love horses. What do you care if maybe I love horses? I don't. A guy like you's got to love something. Oh, it was a real sweet proposition. A jockey in search of a horse. Now, there was something phony about the whole thing. I had the 200 bucks, but I didn't feel good. It was like a guy stealing a murder gun to help out on a scrap metal drive. Well, after the little guy left, I closed the office and started to hit the docks, but it didn't work out. You can buy good whiskey these days, so you feel funny walking up to some guy on the pier and asking, Have you seen a racehorse around here, mister? Well, by nine, I was sure that horse wasn't around, so I borrowed a car and drove out to the track. I found out where Sybil Thornton's horses were quartered and headed down that way. It was pretty dark. So when I bumped into her, all I got was a vague outline. She had a good-looking vague outline. Oh. I'm very sorry. Yeah, I'm full of regrets, too. Shall we try it again? Aren't you a little mixed up in your animals? They keep horses here. You don't seem to mind. No, you lean nicely. But you'd probably feel safer with a platform. Well, we'll try this again when I've had three good meals. That's a horse. 
Yes, I know. In fact, I own her. I see. That'd make you Sybil Thorne. Yes, what would that make you? A guy named Pat Novak looking for your horse. I was hired in the waterfront to find her. Why, they grow big on the waterfront. You must get a lot of sun. By the way, is Fleet Lady missing? Your jockey says she is. That's why I'm snooping around. Didn't know he had any friends. He's got a checkbook. How about Fleet Lady? Is she tucked in bed? Yeah. Let's take a look. You'd find it very dull, Mr. Novak. Yeah, that's what they said to Anthony. Let's see the horse, huh? Suit yourself. She's down this way. Okay. I'm doing this out of the bigness of my heart. I think you're wasting my generosity, Mr. Novak. Don't use it all this trip. It's from in the stable. Come on. All right. Down about here. Fleet Lady's stall. Here. There's a flashlight on the wall. Okay. Poor thing. Do your horses die broke, too? Who is it, Fleet Lady? Yes, are you satisfied? No, I'm going to ring up headquarters. Are you crazy? Then I'm going to call Jackie Gregg and tell him his hunch paid off. I wouldn't do that, Mr. Novak. Stop kidding me, sweetheart. She didn't get killed in a fight with another horse. Gregg figured somebody was tilting the machine. That's why Fleet Lady's dead. That's why I'm going to call headquarters. Shoot yourself, but remember what happened to Fleet Lady. You getting tough, Angel? No. You just wouldn't look good with a saddle, Mr. Novak. <laughs> her as she turned and walked out of there. It was the kind of a walk that makes you flip the calendar and find out how far away spring is. Well, I looked around a while, but it didn't do any good. The place was full of doors, so whoever killed Fleet Lady got out easy like a rumor at a church picnic. I closed the door and went down the line to call headquarters. As I stood in there talking, I saw Sybil Thornton drive by. It was a long convertible with red asbestos seat covers. After I called headquarters, I went back and waited near the stable. About a half hour later, a police car pulled up, and when I saw who got out, I began to get unhappy like a three-legged man in a ballet school. It was Hellman from Homicide, and he had a squad with him. All right, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. Hello, Novak. Where's your trainer? Your boys get paid to laugh at you, Hellman. I don't. Yeah. Where's the horse? What are you doing on the case? I came for the ride. You mind, Novak? No, I just wondered if they wised up downtown. Yeah. Because you could find a dead horse, Hellman. If they staked it out in the middle of Market Street, you'd find it before long. I'll try this time. Where is it? Stall 18 over there. Yeah. Keep an eye on him, boys. I'll be back in a minute. In here, Novak? Yeah, the one with the teeth like yours. You better shut up, Novak. Don't get jumpy. You haven't seen the horse. Just shut up, huh? Well, wasn't going to be much of a conversation anyway. What color horse was that, Novak? What do you mean? Take a look. Yeah, I did. I just took a look. It's a smart horse, Novak. Huh? That's right. That dead horse in there is wearing a double-breasted suit. Hellman got the message straight. I walked in and took a look. Jackie Gregg was lying there on the floor as dead as last year's love. The sickness didn't show until we rolled him over on his stomach. Somebody had gone duck hunting in the middle of his back. I began to feel a little sick myself and was ready to send out for the same gun when Hellman started to talk. You forgot to mention the guy when you phoned headquarters. He wasn't there. I was in here before and the guy wasn't around. What was he doing out of the horse? I don't know. Hellman maybe crawled out of a crack. I don't know. There were two shots. I came in and found the horse. Yeah? Check the horse. You're trying to tell me the horse shot back? Who is he? A guy by the name of Jackie Gregg. He gave me 200 bucks to find a missing horse. Yeah? A horse called Fleet Lady running into Mars Handicap. This is the end of the line. How do you know it's the same one? I don't. Maybe you got to be a horse to tell. Why don't you ask one of your boys? <laughs> yeah. The boy's real tough. Call him off, Hellman. He's nasty. We all hate him, Novak. It's all right. I'll put it on your bill, Hellman. That's good. You can write it up at headquarters. Hellman, you ought to run an idiot. The heavy thinking's too much for you. I can piece this together. We come out here and find a dead man with you kicking up dust 40 feet away. Look, Hellman, I didn't kill the guy and then call up headquarters. I know they're bad in homicide, but I'm not that big-hearted. We got a spare hook for you, Novak. That's where you stay until somebody gets you off. Well, you can start out with Sybil Thornton. Another horse? She's got the speed for it. Look her up. She owns Fleet Lady, and she was dashing around here in the dark, playing easy to get. I'll look her up. You better leave the boys behind. After all, she's only a woman. When you see her, 
Ask about that van down on the waterfront and ask what she was doing before I made that phone call. I'll tag all the bases. Don't worry, Junior. And if things fit together, you'll both be in the jug. I'll see you later. I got work to do. Yeah, it's getting late. You better put the boys back in the cage. <laughs> I began to worry after Hellman left. There was no murder gun, and he didn't have too much to go on, but there was no one else wanted my job. I knew the girl was going to have an alibi, and I was the last guy that Jackie Gregg had seen. I had about as much chance as a fat girl at a Princeton prom. Hellman didn't like me, and he was a smart cop with a disposition like a ton of rhubarb. I had to start right from scratch. I felt like Adam the first morning he woke up. So I looked up a guy named Jocko Madigan, an ex-doctor and a boozer who will give you a lift if you show him where the stirrups are. Oh, a good guy, but he thinks all food makes a gurgle. I hit all the bars and finally found him up at Maggie Nielsen's apartment. She's a good-looking voice that lives up on the hill, and Jocko was working his way into her liquor supply. Hello, Patsy. You're just in time to join me for my first drink of the evening, uh, or one of my first at least. Yeah, I see. Maggie's not here, but I found her whiskey. It was in plain sight, locked in the closet under some newspapers. All right, Jocko, when are you going to sober up? I plan to do it briefly on April 1st, when the rest of the world plays the fool also. I'm in trouble, Jocko. you got to help me. Good. I've got a special bottle I use to forget your troubles. Stop caressing that jug and listen to me. I'm in a jam. Patsy, there's nothing in nature so sad as a half-empty bottle. It's like a broken vow or an unfulfilled promise in the skies. A falling star, almost. All right, Jocko. A falling star, and you shrug it off, never realizing that a whole world has ended at that moment. A hundred million dreams, maybe, and you watch it fall and make an asinine wish, and that's all the good it does is start to fall. It gives some kid a chance to wish for a bicycle. You finished now, Jocko? Yes. What kind of trouble? Anything I could aggravate? I'm mixed up out at the track. A guy by the name of Jackie Gregg is dead, and I don't look good. Uh, Hellman? Yeah. The guy's a jockey, and he hired me to find a horse named Fleet Lady. Did you? Uh, the horse and the jockey ran a dead heat. But there's something funny about the whole deal. Did you talk to the jockey? Not enough. Well, Patsy, you've got to break yourself of the habit of waiting until people are dead before you think of a question. Jocko, I want you to hit all the horse rooms. Find out what you can about the sixth race tomorrow. It's the Bonanza Handicap and hurry up, will you? Well, if it's the sixth race, why can't we wait a while? Start now. Get everything you can and call me. I'll leave a message at your place. Where are you going? I don't know. Maybe up to see the girl. Oh. Patsy, you're going to be waving at the hangman's wife when they spring the trap door. I gotta see her. She owns Fleet Lady. Why don't I see her? She's got a stake somewhere. I got a lot of questions. What could you do up there? Uh, yes, if it weren't an academic question, I'd argue the point. Looked like a bum deal right from the start. Oh, Patsy, you have the instinct for recognizing trouble, but not the intelligence to duck it. Jocko, will you get out to those horse parlors? I need facts, not fables. Now give me a hand. All right. Give my love to a fleet lady. Her name's Sybil Thornton. Well, I'll bet I'm not far wrong. Good night, lover. <laughs> After I left Jocko, I went to the Chronicle morgue and looked up Paul Stangle. We pulled out the clips on Sybil Thornton. Well, they were nice and fat because she'd been to Reno four times and hadn't broke training for years. She'd been traded around more than a Red Sox pitcher. The clipping said that she was 32. There were a lot of pictures, and from her eyes, you got the idea she was around 35. But there were arguments the other way, too. There weren't any stories on her for the last few months, just a few items from the columns. They all said the same thing. She was hitting the night spots with a gambler named Rudy Hauser. There were pictures of him, too. Oh, he would have looked real good in a cave with heavy curtains. I asked Paul. He said Hauser had a gambling place out on Geary, so I took a cab out there. For ten bucks, the guy at the door said Sybil Thorne had left the place an hour ago. That made me feel good. When Hauser opened the door to his office, I lost the glow. Yeah? What's with you? I got a problem. You got the wrong door. Well, you can't get any tougher, so I'm coming in. Hmm. Suit yourself. I never throw anybody out until I'm sure they've lost all their money. 
What's on your mind? A horse named Fleet Lady. She disappeared at 7 o'clock tonight. Here, you check under the rug. I'll try the cabin. She got back just in time to greet somebody's gunsel. If I say no, will you go out and lose your money like a good boy? Fleet Lady was owned by a gal named Sybil Thornton. The columns say you're number five on her list. And they never lie. The whiskey's too good. Also, a little bird says she was in your office an hour ago. That's right. She said your name's Novak. Oh. The next time you get a bombshell, give it a test run. With Fleet Lady dead, your money's going to look good in the sixth tomorrow. What makes you think that gal would throw a race? For the same reason she goes out with you. Huh? When a gal takes a great dane like you out in public, it generally means the guy's a few bucks ahead of her. <coughs> you want to fight the team now, Novak? Oh. Just remember. Sometimes you can't be right in the gentleman, too. Yeah, I hope that's the way you feel when they pick you up for Jackie Gregg's murder. Huh? Oh, you do a real nice double take, mister. The jockey checked out with a horse. I didn't know that, Novak. Yeah, with no brains, you built this gambling club. I didn't know that he was dead. I told you that, Novak, and I meant it. It was all right for a little punk. I'm sorry he's dead. So is he. I'll see you later, Hauser. I got a nose around and find out where you were tonight. Yeah. You seem all right, Novak. So I'll tell you. If you got any dough left when you leave my table, it's better than a horse named Fleet Lady in the sixth race tomorrow. Do you always bet on a dead horse? You got the tip. Use it or bury it, but don't loan it out. Oh, the case was a regular grab bag when I walked out of Hauser's office. I began to tick off the things that didn't add up. First on the list was that van down on the waterfront. If it was Fleet Lady, who got shot in the stable? If it was the ringer, that meant Fleet Lady had run tomorrow. I couldn't figure out why Hauser was so sure she'd win. An idea kept racing around in the back of my mind like an ant in a cookie factory. Jackie Gregg lied about that van down on the waterfront, but why? Not to bail me out of the poorhouse with 200 bucks. I got part of the answer when I stopped with the pay telephone and called Hellman. Yeah, Hellman talking. This is Novak. I got some news. You'll have to put it on the back page. What do you got? Your friend Jackie Gregg had some love life. Well, there's a chance for you, Hellman. Who's the girl, Sybil Thornton? Yeah, we found her picture in his wallet, the gooey kind. I'll bet you stole it for long train rides. What time did he die? The right fit for you between 9 and 10 o'clock. Two shots from a 32 caliber pistol. How about the horse? 45 caliber. Two people. It's getting involved. Maybe, maybe not. You got two hands, Novak. Look up a guy named Rudy Hauser. He's got a joint out on Geary Street. I got enough friends. You look him up. I did. He's still talking about Fleet Lady and tomorrow's race. All right. Maybe he's sentimental. Look, Novak, I'll pick out my own work. I don't need free help from you. Jackie Gregg paid 200 bucks, and look what he got. Suit yourself, but Rudy Hauser and that gal are close friends. Yeah? Like two-part harmony in a telephone booth. Now, get off the dime, Hellman. Hauser's got that gal in his hip pocket. She owns Fleet Lady, and he's betting her to win. You're trying hard, Novak. It's got to be a slow field to lose to a dead horse. Wake up, Hellman. You couldn't smell a rat in a basement full of cheese. I did all right in your apartment. Huh? That thirty-two caliber pistol. We found it up at your place. See you later. Well, I wasn't too worried about that. Hellman's smart enough to know a phony plant. I began to think about that 32 caliber pistol. It's a woman's weapon, but that doesn't prove anything. So is a bread knife if she's in a bad mood. Must have been about midnight when I got to Sybil Thornton's place. She was wearing black lounging pajamas, tied tight around a slim waist. She looked like a wasp with a nice sting, and she had company. Come in, Mr. Novak. Yeah. Mr. Novak, this is Ronnie Stark. Hello, Novak. Yeah. Well, he's not very friendly, Sybil. He's just pouting because they're going to arrest him for Jackie's murder. How do you like Hellman? You've known him longer. Yeah. Somebody left the murder gun up at my place. Where you been all night? Please, Mr. Novak. You're embarrassing Ronnie. That's right. I'm blushing, and it's not the whiskey, Novak. I see. You must stay longer, Ronnie. <laughs> She's persuasive, huh, Novak? I'll see you tomorrow. You won't forget, Ronnie. No, I won't forget. Oh, I'm betting on you, Novak. What won't he forget? Mr. Novak, I hope nobody ever asks you that question. You don't want to talk about putting that gun in my apartment? No. Let's talk about Rudy Hauser, then. Hmm? Your meat grinder friend. We just had a good talk, and he opened up a new road. What'd you tell him? Don't break a spring. He's all right. 
Will you do me a favor, Patsy? Like not talking to Hauser anymore, huh? That's right. Won't do you any good, Patsy, and it'll do me a lot of good. How's he going to know which horse got killed? I'll bet you lied to him, Angel. It's my apple cart, Patsy. Leave it alone. Sure. But play your hand right, baby, because I'm going to watch your cards. And if you got one that says Jackie Gregg, I'm going to call you the hard way, too. Patsy, you're a nice beast. I really think you would. Sit down. Yeah. Drink? No. Do you good? Not right now. Well, you've read the book. Just a couple of chapters. You bet they're the right ones. You better watch out, baby. I may be a long shot. Well, you care as long as I bet. I don't. That's good. I didn't think you'd mind. All right, Angel. It's time to wire the folks. Just to know that. Just wait till you know me better. That's for me. I left the number. It's your fault, then. Yeah. Hello, Patsy. What'd you find out, Jocko? Not much. Nobody seems to care about the sixth race. I care about it. Well, that's because you killed one of the jockeys. The rest of the people have a more casual interest. How do the odds run? No heavy favorites. Vinair and Sleepy Time Gal figure to be the best at around five to one. What about Fleet Lady? Down the line somewhere. I talked to one fellow. He says she's a dog and couldn't beat a paralytic goose over a hundred yards. Yeah, what else? That's all. What do you mean, that's all? Start digging, Jocko. We're not getting any place. Well, not even at your end? Huh? I counted on you to do better than that. Right, lover? On the way home, I bought the morning papers. There was a story on Jackie Gregg. No details, most of the story was a statement by Hellman on Hellman. There was no mention of fleet lady. And at one o'clock in the morning, there was nothing I could do but roll into bed. I woke up about nine and called Jocko. It was like sending a message out to the Farallones by Indian Runner. He just muttered and said he'd meet me out at the track. Well, I had to have some more dope, so I called Ira Snow. He calls the races and bets on them. The way he does it, a horse is a real beast of burden. He was playing elf when I got him on the wire. Yeah. Ira, this is Novak. What do you know about the Bonanza handicap? It's a horse race. Oh, you're funny. What about the field? Are the horses any good? Uh, for hamburgers, maybe. Nothing else. How about Fleet Lady? Uh, Eastern track. Nobody knows. Would she be worth a heavy plunge? If you want to be a monk. What's this all about? Ira, I'm in trouble. How about a fix? Could they run in a ringer on Fleet Lady? It's been done before, but it ain't easy. That's what I figured. How's Rudy Hauser on horses? He ain't. He got burned a long time ago. He never bets. I think you're wrong. Look, Novak, I know every guy in town that's got the itch. Rudy Hauser, no. You know a guy named Ronnie Stark? Sure, he runs a book. Why? Nothing. I may see you at the track. I'm going to make a bet. Yeah, I'll tell the horses. <laughs> That left me in a hole. If Ira was right, Rudy Hauser on Fleet Lady didn't make a bit of sense. I got out to the track about 2.30. Jocko was there, and Hellman was wandering around up in the grandstand where they couldn't push him into a starting gate. Sybil Thornton waved from her box as I moved over to get a better shot at the starting line for the sixth. They were almost at the post when Jocko came back from the betting window. Well, Patsy, I bet two dollars on a horse called Scotch Victory. It seemed like a good omen. Yeah. I saw your friend Rudy Hauser at the window. Huh? He was pouring money down on the favorites to win. Well, that's why the odds have gone down on Vinair and Sleepy Time Gal. Look at that board. Yes, Fleet Lady's gone all the way up to 12 to 1. Yeah, from 8 to 1, all the way up. Maybe the word got around she's dead. No, that's the funny part. She's down there, number three on the rail, see? Not a peep out of anybody. Yeah. They are running. Hot weather is going to the front by one length. Sleepy time gal by ahead. Fleet lady between horses is running third by one length. On the outside, it's Benair and Old Soldier by two lengths. Going into the clubhouse turn, it's hot weather by two lengths. Sleepy time gal by a half length. Fleet lady is moving up on the outside. It's Benair fourth by one. 
Fleet lady runs well for a ghost. Yeah. yeah Rudy Howes had better hurry or he won't see much, huh? He better hurry. He left the track ten minutes ago. Huh, are you sure, Jocko? Yes, I heard him tell someone he had to make a phone call just before the betting closed. Well, Jocko, you're a sweetheart. Oh, I like to Let's go to the stable. The... Well, the race isn't over. It was over five minutes ago. Well, how about my two dollars? Come on, will you? There's only one person who won't try to fix a horse race. That's a horse. <laughs> I knew there was going to be trouble fast. The horses were just coming under the wire when I waved to Hellman and started for the stable. When we got there, Sybil Thornton was clearing out like a fire sale. I'm in a hurry, Patsy, darling. Let me by. No, you made a bad play, Angel. Stick around. Let me by, Patsy. You heard him, lady. Stick around. Thanks, copper. I'll take charge. That's a big gun, Hauser. I got a big beef. You let me drop a hundred grand, Sybil. Was your idea, Rudy? Not this way. You let me drop a hundred grand because you ran Fleet Lady. The program said Fleet Lady, and that's who ran. I brought those odds into line at the window. My other 80 looked bad on Fleet Lady. You didn't stay to watch her trail the field. All right, I didn't stay. You lost your hundred grand. You killed the ringer. You were a smart big shot who was going to sew up the race. You ran Fleet Lady and cost me a hundred grand. All right, copper, move away from her. Over this way, Sybil. No. Don't let him do it, Patsy. I want to see how tough you are. Come on, Sybil. Let you and me move over against the stall. Watch out, Hauser. You're backing into the horse. Grab the horse, Novak. He's going to trample him. You grab him. It's your idea. Is he dead? Should have learned the first time. You can't beat the horses. That's a bum joke, Novak. I guess it is. Now that we're all here, who do we book for Jackie Gregg's murder? I'll answer that one, friend. Who's this guy? One you missed, Hellman. Hello, Stark. Hi, Novak. Well, what are you waiting for, Sybil? Tell the man you killed Jackie Gregg. I've had enough trouble today, Ronnie. You got more coming. You figured it out yet, Novak? Hauser dumped his 80 grand on you. That's right. It's a lot of spending money. Wait a minute. Ronnie, I don't like this. You'll get your half, baby. I'm going to write out an I.O.U. And when they booked you for murder and the vote's in, you can't use it. You wouldn't do a thing like that, Ronnie. A dead girl can't spend 40 grand. She killed your guy, Copper, and tried to palm it off on Novak. I was there, so I'll testify. Ronnie, you're a no-good guy. Don't be silly. I love justice. A booker for murder, Copper. I want to tear up that I.O.U. <laughs> finally worked it out. Started out as a fixed race, and when they were all through, it was up to the horse. Rudy Hauser put the squeeze on Sybil for some dough. She offered to run a fast ringer in place of Fleet Lady, so Hauser could pick up a bag full. Rudy just wanted to make sure, so he sent one of his boys around to knock off Fleet Lady. Only the guy killed the ringer instead. Well, it was a break for Sybil. She made a deal with a bookie named Ronnie Stark to take all of Hauser's bets and guaranteed him that Fleet Lady couldn't win because she wasn't that good a horse. It panned out that way. She let Hauser think Fleet Lady was dead. He spent 20 grand at the window pushing up the odds on Fleet Lady and dumped another 80 on her to win. A moving van? It was a phony story Greg used to get me to scare Sybil. He wanted in on the deal. He went back to the stable that night, got in a beef, and she killed him. She had him out in her car. When I went to make that phone call, she figured it was a good way to pass the buck. Well, Hellman asked only one question. Why would a nice, tame horse go crazy and trample a man to death? Jocko had the answer. The horse that killed Hauser was a filly. The 
Armed Forces Radio Service has just brought you Pat Novak for Hire, starring Jack Webb. Pat Novak is produced by William P. Russo. Jocko Madigan is played by Tudor Owen. Inspector Hellman is played by Raymond Burr. Music was composed and conducted by Basil Adlam. Be with us again next week when over most of these same stations we'll bring you Pat Novak for Hire. Novak for Hire was previously released by ABC, the American Broadcasting Company, for listeners in the United States, and rebroadcast for our men and women overseas. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.